Okay, for question 13, um, it is a relatively strict, straightforward question. Um, so at the beginning, you will have a light bulb and uh, it is connected in parallel. So I try to help you by stating how it is being connected. So from the IV graph, you can also see that both filaments are non-omic as their resistance are changing over time, uh, over when, when voltage increase. So in the first question, it is that kind of straightforward database question asking you about describing the trend. So because these are nonlinear graphs, uh, all you need to do is just to observe whether the resist how the resistance are changing when voltage increase, right? Uh, for those of you who still couldn't figure out how to see the resistance, I will spend maybe one minute to talk about this. So if you look at the graph, it is an IV graph, I over V. So because of that, your gradient is actually given by the change in I, that means I2 minus I1 over the change in V, which is V2 over V, V2 minus V1. <clears throat> so because of that, uh, and if you compare it with the resistance formula, which is V over I, you can see that there is a lot of similarity between these two. So if you combine these together, you can see that the gradient is actually representing the reciprocal of resistance. Right? So, um, so if you look at, uh, for example, if I want to investigate how the resistance of filament one change, you can just pick any two random point when, this is when uh, V is low, uh, compare it with another point that is further down, which give you a higher V, and you ask yourself, uh, how does the, uh, <coughs> how does the, what you call that? How does the, um, ah, suddenly I forget the word. How does the grade, the slope of the graph looks like? So let me see whether I can get your yep, shape. So if I look at the slope of the graph, right? Yeah, if I draw a tangent here, compare with another tangent that is that is here, maybe like that. Yeah. So if I look at the uh, gradient here, I can see that uh, the slope is more steep. So I would say that this guy has high gradient. Then over here, I would have a low gradient. Now coming back to what we have uh, deduced, we know that a uh, high gradient would mean that this particular value is small. So because of that, I would know that your R here is small and uh, vice versa. If I have a low gradient, it would mean that the R over here will be big. So because of that, I know that this R is going to be large. So if I look at the trend over here, I can deduce that the resistance increase with voltage. All right. Um, then for part B, uh, it is just a very easy three marks. Um, I basically uh, is telling you that the uh, voltage supply is 12 volt. And because this guy is connected in parallel, it means that both filament is going to receive 12 volt. So once you have this data, you can go to the graph at 12 volt and you can actually find out what is the current that is flowing through when the PD is 12 volt. So if you put in the, the numbers, you will be able to find out that at 12 volt, the resistance of filament one and two are as such. And because they are connected in parallel, um, you can then apply the uh, uh, parallel resistance formula to get the R effective. So that's the easiest three mark in the entire paper. Then after that, I try to check whether you are very familiar, familiar with how uh, the characteristics of series and parallel circuit. So I'm trying to tell you that now the filament is no longer in parallel. It is now in series. And I want to know how does the current voltage and power change? 
So since you are already investigating current and voltage, um, the power can be deduced by V times I. This will be the easiest, right? Um, why is it that I no longer uh, advertise you to use P equals to I square R or P equals to V square over R? So at the beginning of the video, I'm sharing with you that both filament are non-omic. It means that the R over here is no longer a constant value. So if you are using this pair of equation, you have to investigate how R change, how I change, and how V change. Basically, you have added more difficulty to, to, the, to the deduction, right? So because of this, then uh, out of convenience, since I have already uh, investigate how I change and V change, then it is more straightforward if I apply uh, P equals to V over I. Okay, so let's take a look. So at the very beginning, I have two filament, R1 and R2, uh, connected to a 12 volt. Let's make it 12 volt uh, supply. Then uh, the question is saying now R1, R2 is in series. So if you recall in parallel, the PD across parallel component are the same. So because of that, I can easily deduce that my voltage is going to be 12 volt, 12 volt. Now, if I look at uh, the characteristic of how EMF are being shared uh, in a series circuit, then I would know that um, my V1 and V2, if I add them up, I will then get 12 volt. So this means that uh, my V1 and V2 cannot be larger than 12 volt. So with this, I would be able to say that my voltage, uh, my PD across R1, uh, filament 1 and filament 2 must drop. Right, so that's... Okay, as for the current, it is quite straightforward as well. So if you look at the original uh, arrangement, the two filament are in parallel meaning that the R effective is going to be small. Uh, and when the two filament are in series, you will end up with a much larger R effective. Okay? And uh, if your power supply is still the same 12 volt with a smaller R effective, you are going to get a big current. But when you have the same 12 volt, but now the R effective is larger, you are going to get a smaller current being drawn. So now I know that the current will drop as well as the voltage. So if now I apply the P equals to VI formula, I would know that the power would have dropped as well. So that's how you answer part C. For your part D, they are asking you to give a possible reason why the two filament will have different resistance. So there are many answer. Uh, the two most common answer would be they are made of different material and hence the resistivity are different. Uh, the other one could be uh, one of the filament has actual, actually better heat conductivity and the other one is worse. So one of them will have different temperature and for non-omic uh, resistor, temperature will play a part in the resistance. Okay, then for part E is basically a... a, a a device that is being taken out from one of your homework okay it's a relay so what happened uh, is that most of you uh, could answer it uh, clearly and uh, most of you are scoring uh, two marks out of two um, most of the problem that arises come from part two when we are checking whether you are very sensitive to uh, how short circuit are formed so I will spend most of my time here to explain why, how to answer part two. So if you look at the circuit, you can simplify it to the circuit diagram to the right. So if you can see here, uh, this switch that will be activated by the magnet, I turn it into a switch to make it simplified. Uh, switch S is over here. So this is your switch S. Um, this path over here from battery to here, corresponds to here to here, right? And then the path from this to the light bulb is represented by the path over here. And of course, this yellow path in the original diagram is represented by this part over here. 
can see. So now the question is saying that what will happen if this guy have very low resistance. Now what you can see is that when the current are being drawn over here from the battery, there are two possible paths, either here or it goes here. Now if the resistance here is very low, can you see that this yellow path would become a short circuit to the orange path, meaning that most of the current will be drawn to the yellow path. So even if your switch here is closed, your light bulb cannot turn on because all the current will be drawn to the yellow path because of the very low resistance. So technically down here, you will have a very high current drawn and basically this guy will become a short circuit. And down here, you would have almost zero current. Yeah. So because of that, we are checking whether you are sensitive enough to see that uh, when the coil of wire uh, has very low resistance that a short circuit will form. Uh, most of the candidate actually answer that due to the very low resistance, you will end up with a very weak magnetic force. Um, I appreciate your attempt. I think it is a logical attempt and you are just thinking on the spot. So. I hope through this prelim, you would be more sensitive now to the formation of short circuit. Um, so how do you detect short circuit? Number one is that there must be a parallel path. That means there must be a junction for your current to split. The other criteria for a short circuit to form is that the alternate path has low resistance, meaning resistance that is close to zero. Okay, so that would be your question 13 either.